national non-domestic rates or uh, business rates as it's more commonly known just to know also that the workshop is being recorded and it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So th the session today, um, what that will cover is uh, it'll provide an overview of the payment process that we introduced in April this year, an overview of the NNDR service, including the information um, that's needed for the claims template, an overview of how uh, the business rates is, is handled in, in the accounts as well, and what the next steps are for April uh, next year and some of the those improvements. The revised payment process was introduced in April this year. Um, it was introduced with the aim to try and streamline what was um, or what is quite a, a complex and uh, circular system. And this in turn, will, uh, we, we anticipate will help to reduce burdens on building authorities, local authority maintained schools um, and, and academies as well. A couple of important things to know about, about the change in the payment process is it is does not represent um, um, a change to funding levels and there's no change in liability for rates. So the liability for, remain, for rates remains with local authority maintained schools and academies and for community and voluntary control schools, the liability remains with um, the, the local authority. So the payment process that was launched in April this year, 122 uh, billing authorities have implemented the new system. These billing authorities cover approximately 47% of our schools now. In county, in county areas, all of the district billing authorities um, had to agree. 45 out of the 81 billing authorities who um, asked to opt in were able to onboard. Um, so these billing authorities spread across um, six county areas. In areas where we didn't get mutual agreement, we weren't able to uh, bring them bring them on board. The, the new uh, or the revised payment system was uh, launched in um, two phases. The first phase implemented was for new claims, and that ran from the 1st of April to, to the middle of May. Uh, the second phase, which went live in on, on the 1st of July, was for in-year adjustments, um, and that is currently live, and that is uh, running up until the 31st of January next year. Under the revised payment process, uh, we make payments to billing authorities um, as a lump sum. We, we made the payments for new claims at the end of June um, and adjustments. We did a, a mid-year reconciliation uh, where we made payments in October um, and any subsequent claims um, that have come in after that point will be paid at the end of March next year. Building authorities do get a breakdown of, of the payments issued um, for, for each of their schools as well. So what are the benefits or for the building authorities that, that have opted in? The main aim of the change is to try and reduce some of the burdens on our local authority maintained schools and academies. Um, so that is that the schools no longer have to pay the rates bills and academies no longer have to spend time in claiming back that money from the ESFA. This reduces some of the administrative burdens and it simplifies the existing process, um, removing the unnecessary, unnecessary circular flow of business rates funding. Um, there's also no lagging funding um, as the bills are paid in year. And the adjustments are also paid in year, so it means schools no longer need to absorb any in-year adjustments. We, we make any payments as a lump sum to billing authorities, and in terms of for billing authorities, where you would normally have to deal with multiple schools if you have queries or in any payment queries, um, you only have to deal with the ESFA, um, who will handle any, any inquiries um, that you have with a claim. The process, once it's set up, is, is simple. Um, to administer and it's and, and it's straightforward and we've and that's been um, highlighted in, in the feedback that we have received from from billing authorities as well so on this slide here I've just noticed some of the feedback that we have received in the main this has been um, wholly positive um, in terms of what requires further improvement then there's the two main themes that, that we've identified uh, the first is around the initial setup um, there was some initial confusion with 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 signing in, um, but we immediately addressed those concerns. And again, we'll make sure that that is dealt with um, for, for phase three um, as well. The other the other um, area that was identified was around payments. So um, again, there was some initial confusion as to um, which accounts payments are, are made into. Again, we will look to clarify that in the guidance. Um, and another issue that's brought to our attention was in terms of uh, making a payment on the last day of June. Um, it means it hits uh, 
billing authority accounts on the 1st of July, which falls into quarter two. So we've been asked to whether we can review that and bring that a few days earlier. So the collection targets um, fall in quarter one as opposed to quarter two. Um, I'm going to hand over to Jane now, who will um, provide a bit of further information on um, the NNDR service itself. Thanks. That's so I'm uh, Jane Vicente. I work in the digital team for the NNDR service. So I was just going to take you through just a, a broad overview, really, of how to gain access to the service and what the service actually looks like when you get in there. Because <clears throat> um, as Hilet said, some of the feedback we've had around creating the accounts has, has been has shown we've had some challenges in that area. So we just wanted to run through that with you. Um, so to provide us with your completed claim, you'll first need to obviously gain access to our NNDR service. And you do that by setting up a DFE sign-in account. Some of you might be familiar with DFE sign-in because DFE sign-in is a, an authentication service that, that runs across a lot of different services that we have at the DFE. Some of you won't be familiar with it at all. So you'll need to set up an account from scratch. So if you haven't got a DFE sign in account, there are a couple of steps that you'll need to go through to, to gain access. You'll first have to create your account. You'll then have to attach the account to your billing authority. And then you'll have to attach your account to the NNDR service. So those are the three broad steps that you'll need to go through. So the first step to create your account, you should navigate to the DFE sign-in service. We've provided a link on this slide and I think you've got access to the slides, but if you didn't have the link, it is Googleable. You can Google it. Um, it, it comes up, if you type in DFE sign-in account, it comes up as like the first hit. You just need to remember what it's called. <laughs> Um, so you've got the link, you've navigated to it, and then it's, you'll just need to enter your name and a specific email address. Um, and that's the critical part is that you'll need a specific email address for your name. Uh, the service doesn't actually accept any generic email addresses. So if you've got an email address like admin at your billing authority.co.uk, it wouldn't accept that. That would um we would see that as a compromise to security. So we don't let those types of email addresses in. So it has to be a specific address. Um, once you've done that step, you'll um, get an email that you'll need to just click on to verify your email address. I think that's pretty standard across quite a lot of a lot of internet based things. So you should be familiar with that kind of process. So you've verified your email address, you'll then log in. Once you've logged into the DFE sign in service, you'll then need to request access to an organisation. So this is where you're attaching your billing authority to your account. So you um, there's a section of DFE sign in called organisations and you'll need to navigate through there and request access to your organisation. So you'll literally just type in the name of your billing authority. Um, I would say if you've already got a DFE sign in account, because some of you might have already, you should just double check that you are actually attached to the billing authority because it is the billing authority that that we need you to be attached to in order to do your NNDR return or your NNDR claim. So that's that. Here, look, could we have the next slide, please? OK, so that's the first two steps. You've created your account, you've attached to your organisation. The next step is to then add the NNDR service to your account. Like I said earlier, DFE Sign-In is an authentication platform that runs across a number of different services at the DFE. So you just need to make sure that you've got your account access for NNDR. Um, it might be that you've got other services in there as well, um, but likelihood is that you might not have. So you'll just need to make sure you're attached to an NDR. So you do this by again logging into DFE sign in. There's a, a section in there called related actions and you'll need to select add services to my account from the related actions list on the your services page. Hopefully it's quite self-explanatory when you get in there. Um, and you should be able to select the NNDR claim service from there. 
and then going forward you should just be able to access the NNDR service from the Your Services page. Um, there are a couple of little troubleshooting tips that we send out to people that are struggling with access. So we ask that if you're having troubles at this stage, um, once you've added the service, it's helpful sometimes to completely log out of DFE sign in, clear your browsing history and then log back in. Or you could sign in through a in private browsing tab just to make sure that you can get in. I think sometimes the caches uh, trip people up. So that's a helpful step to do if you're having troubles and that's it. And that's I think setting up your DFE sign in account is a step that you can do as soon as you're ready. Um, even though we're not ready, obviously, for the NNDR submissions to come in until April, you could do that in advance of then to get in a good place. So once you've logged in, you will then be presented with the NNDR service. So the NNDR service um, walks you through a couple of screens. It's quite simple as a journey. I think the, the complex bit is the bit that Dave's going to take you through in a second. But once you've logged in to the service, you'll see screens that look similar to this. In likelihood, they, they might be slightly different. As Hillett mentioned, we've been getting feedback from uh, the groups that are already using the service. We're likely to go out for some more feedback before we launch in April with the next phase. So it might be that we'll change these up a little bit, but the, the journey shouldn't be super different to what we're looking at on screen right now. So the service will first um, play you back your details so you can just double check that you know you're logged in under the right billing authority and it also just gives you a little bit of information a little bit of steering about the claim process and then you'll be taken to an upload page um, and on this upload page you'll need to upload your claims template which is an excel file again Dave is going to talk through in a minute a bit more about the, the the template file so I won't touch on that too much but it just you just need to be aware that it needs to be the current excel template that we've provided in the guidance so it's worth clicking through and making sure that you're you're using the most up-to-date file again that might be something that will change um, when we do the redesign we might make that more accessible to you so once you've chosen your file to upload it, you'll literally click on choose file, select your file from your desktop, you know, as you would when you're browsing a file and then click to upload. You'll then be asked to agree to some standard declarations, which are check boxes. So you'll need to make sure you've ticked all of those boxes and then you can submit your file through to the service. So the files go through a virus checker. They'll also go through data validation, um, you know, and if the files fail or either of those steps, we'll probably be in touch with you, um, maybe to ask you to resubmit or to use a different file, depending on what the issue is. Um, and that's it, really, in a nutshell. It's quite a, it's quite a straightforward, simple process once you actually get into the digital form itself. But I'll hand over to Dave now to talk you through the, the template itself and the claims process. Thank, thank you, Jane. Um, so I'm, I'm Dave Smith and I'm going to give you an overview of the, the operational side of an NNDR claims. So, so once you've got access to the NNDR service, you're able to submit a claim to us. Um, so uh, the bank claim forms can be downloaded from our gov.uk uh, web page and at the same location there's also some detailed guidance detailing um, how to complete the, each column in the form. Um, as James just mentioned, the form itself is Microsoft Excel based, so it's quite user friendly to use and it looks very similar or it is it's the same as the um, image at the bottom of this slide. If you if you can see it and it's quite small. Um, essentially for each claim, we ask you to confirm the school names in your area, the addresses, the properties themselves and the value you, you want us to pay. Um, when completing the form, you have two options. You can either populate, the, populate it directly from your own data source, or alternatively, the SFA publish a list of schools that are in your area, and it's in the same format as the sheet. Uh, so this means you can copy and paste uh, them directly into the form, and then you just need to add the account numbers and the, the claim values. The latter is probably the, the easier approach, but depending on um, your preferred option, you know, you can use either. 
Um, if a school is missing from our published list for any reason, uh, it could be that it's a new school added this year, then you can manually add it to the sheet, um, just add it to the bottom. Um, in most cases, each school will have one row, so one, one, one claim row per school, uh, but uh, in some instances where a school has a split site, for example, there's, there could be separate infants and junior buildings, then you're allowed to add two rows for the same school. Um, and we will pick that up and pay, uh, uh, make separate payments for each of those. Um, so once once your claim form is fully complete, you can then upload it to our portal. Um, you can submit a claim form to us as many times as you want. So if your first uh, submission is missing a property um, or has an error on it, or even if it's just requires an in-year change, maybe something's been revalued, uh, just resubmit it to us and we'll pick up the latest data set. Um, one thing we do ask um, when you're submitting your claims to us is uh, that you don't amend the template format in any way, as this uh, might prevent the, the automated uh, validation from running. So please just don't don't add any uh, columns, remove any or rename anything. Uh, if it does, it might just stop the automated process and we, we might need to come back to you uh, to ask to, uh, uh, to resubmit the file. OK, thank you. Um, so in terms of eligible claims, um, all local authority maintained schools and academies, including 16 to 19 academies that are not FE institutions fall under the new process. So all of these can be submitted in your claim and we'll we'll pay those. Uh, this also includes any associated playing fields or other buildings that are used by the school or academy, as long as it's used directly for educational purposes. Um, there's quite an extensive list of what's eligible to be claimed. So um, a full, we haven't detailed them in these slides, but um, a full list is uh, published on our gov.uk page to assist you when completing the form. Um, some of the properties that we'd not expect to see in the claim are buildings that are not used for educational purposes. So this could be offices um, where there's no actual education taking place. Um, We'd also not expect to see nursery claims in there because they're funded from a different route. Um, the the only exception there is if it's part of the overall school and it's um, within the main building and it's not possible to split out those rate bills. Uh, also on the the, the list of uh, properties you wouldn't expect to pay are pupil referral units. Are these as these are funded through the the high needs block, rented buildings, FE institutions, and private schools. Um, so once you've submitted your claim file to us, we'll um, review it, assess it and arrange a payment for you. Um, if we have any queries on the claim, we'll contact you for further clarification. Um, and once you've confirmed that, we'll um, process the, 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 pay, the, the, the payments through. Um, payments are automatically processed after the initial claims in June. Uh, they're also uh, paid at two reconciliation points in October and March later in the year. And um, we also make monthly payments if required. So, so for example, if uh, if we've queried a claim property with you and you've provided feedback at a later date, we'll uh, we'll arrange immediate payment once that that feedback comes into us. Um, all payments uh, you receive will be via BAX um, as a single lump sum, and this is always on the last working day of the month. Um, Payment remittances are automatically sent to your finance teams a couple of days ahead of the payment, so they know it's on the way. So this will detail the exact value um, you're receiving. Um, and we'll also provide a separate uh, detailed breakdown of payment amounts at property level. So this will in, this will detail the individual buildings, uh, the associated count numbers that you provide to as property references. So you can cross check that back to your or tick those off against your own payments and the, the remittance will look uh, as uh, that image in the bottom of that slide there. Um, if you have any queries at any point on your payments, um, you're able to contact us uh, at any time and we'll confirm, we'll get back to you as, with an answer as soon as possible. Um, or any other general queries, we've, we have a, an inquiries desk where you can send uh, general queries to. So that's a really quick overview of the claim and payment processes. So I'm going to hand back to Halat now to give you um, an overview of the, the, the accounting side and the discuss the next steps. Thanks, Dave. 
so I thought it was useful just to include um, an overview of, of the accounting. This is mainly relevant probably to unitary authorities or any finance colleagues that we, ha we do have on the call. So um, the NFF allocation, which is the national funding formula, still includes an allocation for business rates um, and business rates remain part of the, of the school's budget. In the authority performer tool, uh, which finance call is complete, the local authority will still be um, and it's input the estimated rates figure uh, from 22-23 and um, local authorities can also include any prior year adjustments uh, on, on, on that APT as well. In terms of the, the dedicated schools grant DSG, which is better known as, um, where billing authorities have opted in, what we will do, we will actually deduct um, the NNNDR figure from, from the dedicated schools grant. Um, and for all local authorities, ESFA, um, we'll deduct the NFF and NDR mark for academies from the DSG rather than it be recouped. So whether the academy um, is opted in or out, um, we will just remove that amount from the DSG. Um, if the billing authority is opted in, local authorities no longer include the cash for rates in the maintained schools budget payments, uh, but still needs to be main part of, of the accounts. And then in terms of the section 251 and CFR, all of the local authorities must record um, the NNDR charges in, in, in both of the section 251 and CFR. Now that's just a very, very high level overview. We do have detailed guidance coming out um, in the NNDR accounting guidance, um, and that will be communicated to all finance, finance leads and also further information will be provided in the APT guidance as well. In terms of uh, next steps then, so include a timeline there, which shows some of the key activities that uh, we've started um, doing out, and that will happen between now and go live uh, in, for April. So, Today, the, the webinar that we're running today, because we wanted to engage early with building authorities that can't quit in the system, um, just to provide even an overview of the system. What we will do, we'll also be coming out after this webinar now to uh, to yourselves to confirm what you'd like to do for, for April next year. Um, and then moving on to uh, December, once we uh, get that information back in, we will confirm to billing authorities um, and uh, your schools as well, uh, what payment process that they are, that they are adopting. As Jane's already mentioned, we will be um, getting some feedback from um, billing authorities for phase three. So we will be reaching out to yourselves um, during um, uh, December and January for, for using research as well. Um, and then looking forward to January and February. So we'll be working on the system development and updating the, the claims template um, as well. And then we'll um, Probably look to take some under, some uh, user testing as well uh, with users as well. Um, guidance will be updated before go live, so that's both the policy guidance and the technical guidance um, ahead of go live, which we anticipate in um, on uh, around the first of April. Um, we will issue any communications to the billing authority lead contacts that we have noted. For phase one, we did write out to all billing authorities asking them to provide us contact details. They are the contact details that we are using. If these have changed, please can you just drop us um, an email to let us know who those contacts are because um, um, that's who we will send the communications out to. So in terms of the feedback that we've received and um, some of the lessons that we've learned from the earlier phases, um, so what, what what are some of the improvements in the areas that we are considering um, for, for phase three? So time it comes to building authorities and schools, we were a little bit on the back foot last year. Um, but there were some last minute changes that we we're expecting. So we weren't able to get out um, information to building authorities as quickly as we would like. But, you know, we've started that earlier this year uh, for phase three. Um, so um, can we get any changes to you a lot quicker? So it gives you time to prepare. In developing the system and the claim form um, through further automation, so you know making that user journey as um, as easy uh, as possible for you. Already mentioned at the early in the presentation, reviewing the payment dates. You know if that helps you in terms of collection targets, we will look to see what what can be done around that, um, and also um, making sure that we improve the um, guidance, technical guidance, and around the initial registration. Um, and we did receive a number of inquiries around um, the accounting aspect of NNDR. So we have developed um, quite a detailed um, guide on that, which we will publish as well. Um, so they're just some of the things that we've already picked up from the feedback that we got through the early phases. Um, but we will be going out, as Jane mentioned, to for, for further research. Um, and you know we will look to incorporate that into uh, 
the phase three as well, making sure the system is, you know, um, fit, fit, fit for our users. That's all uh, we have planned in terms of, of the presentation uh, today. Um, happy to take any questions um, that you may have. So, OK, so if there's no further questions, um, what we'll do, we'll circulate uh, the link to the recording once we've uploaded it. We'll also circulate the slide pack um, to the attendees on this session. Um, like I said, if, if there's been any changes to contact uh, leads for, for, your, for your race teams, if you, I'll, I'll pop in the address as well. If you can just let us know those contact details.